OK, now more serious. Back to the Solomon Islands and this week's meeting here in Australia between Anthony Albanese and their Prime Minister, Manasse Sogavare. Now, I've already made my feelings pretty clear. In summary, the whole thing leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Former High Commissioner to the Pacific Nation, James Batley, joins me now. James, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Am I just reading this all wrong? Oh, uh, look, I think, uh, Aaron, I'd call this pretty much a draw. Um, I think, uh, you know, the significant thing about the Prime Minister Sogavari coming to Australia is that I, I suspect he was under a bit of pressure back home uh, to demonstrate that he could actually have a relationship with Australia. I think a lot of Solomon Islanders will have been worried by his really extreme and intemperate language in talking about what they know to be their most reliable long-term partner. So, you know, he, he did need to come to Australia. Uh, at the same time, we need to talk to him. I mean, the fact is he's the mm. Prime Minister. So that's why I say I, I suspect it's a bit of a draw here. So Australia's not entirely innocent in this, essentially, is what you're saying? Well, we've got to deal with the, the people that, uh, that we find that are elected in the region. We can't pick and choose... Uh, who we deal with. Um, that's that's just part of the territory. Give me an insight into what it's like to do business, I guess, or, or diplomacy in the Solomon Islands. You spent a fair bit of time there. Yeah, and I've, I've worked with uh, with Prime Minister Sogavari uh, a fair bit before. He's uh, He can be a very prickly uh, and, and nationalistic uh, kind of guy. He can be quite emotional. Um, and indeed, you know, to, to a degree that we would think goes, goes over the top. Um, and I think a lot of Solomon Islanders mm. would also agree with that assessment. Um, but uh, like I say, uh, leaders in the region around the world, they come in all shapes and sizes and we've got to take them as we find them. No, you're absolutely right there. Did he use China, do you think, to get what he wanted out of Australia? I think he he wants to show uh, to his citizens and to the world in general that Solomon's uh, is a sovereign independent state that can have relations with whoever it likes. Uh, so he's... And because Australia looms so large in Solomon Islands that we are so engaged... Uh, through our aid program, through our uh, security cooperation programs, through the labour mobility schemes to Australia. In a sense, that message is a message to Australia that we don't depend entirely on you, that we are able to have other relationships. I, I think, you know, where he and his government did make a mistake was in thinking that they could enter this security agreement with China uh, and that that would not have a, have a would not damage their relationship with Australia. Mm. I think in reality it has really damaged trust and confidence. And I don't think this visit to Canberra um, earlier or last week will have done the job. Will will have restored relationships to where they might be. I, I think there is definitely a residual level of mistrust uh, in Canberra uh, amongst the people that matter uh, about. Prime Minister Sogavari. Do you believe him when he says that there'll be no Chinese bases on his land or do you think maybe he believes that but it may not be true or, or is he telling a porky? No, I think he believes that and I'm certain that he wants us to believe that. He certainly <laughs> says it often enough. Uh, you know, I think the... If he had had a press conference during his visit, I think one of the questions uh, I would have liked to ask him was, well, why is this security agreement with China still a secret? Why has it not mm. been uh, publicly released? You know, what is the problem here? Uh, I, I think uh, he may well have a bit of buyer's regret now that uh, th th this security agreement was clearly written entirely in Beijing uh, and I think Solomon's uh, walked into signing it without really thinking through um, the implications.
You know, as far this, as Australia is concerned. Yeah, and speaking of uh, Australia and as far as we're concerned, what do we want and need out of this relationship and what do they want and need out of this partnership? Well, uh, they need a, a reliable long-term partner and indeed that is what we are. As I say, I think that's what most Solomon Islanders would think of Australia. What, well, I think what we are looking for... Um, of course we accept that a country like Solomon's, it's an independent, sovereign nation, it's a member of the United Nations, it can have relationships with whoever it likes. I mean, Australia has diplomatic relations with China. But we do want, though, a country like Solomon Islands to, to consider its relationship with Australia when it goes into uh, an agreement with China, such as the one that it's signed. And it's not clear to me that they really sat down and thought, well, we're not doing this in isolation. Uh, we have really critical uh, relationships with countries like Australia, not to mention uh, neighbours like Papua New Guinea, which I think is, is also worried about this, uh, this agreement. Yeah, absolutely. We're not alone in our worry about it. And you're right, we'd love to see a copy of the actual agreement that, that speaks volumes. I think that that hasn't been released. James Batley, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. Really appreciate it. A pleasure.